the Lord showed me before we went into this revival I was sharing amen brother Dion last night on the telephone God made me so many promises before this revival week and one thing that God really began to show me as I was praying about this Pentecost revival God began to share with me that this is a time when he was going to make me even the more sensitive to his voice and God says if you allow me I'll make you sensitive and you'll know me you'll know my voice in a greater way and I tell you during the course of this revival the Lord has proven himself to me listen you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him I've had too great of an experience with God for me to doubt God now I don't doubt him listen I told them the other night in ministry education class and ministry education let me say thank God for you thank you so much for the way you have supported this amen and prayed for this I told them listen it's time now to take the limits off of God it's time to loose God's hands so that God can move in your life the way God wants to move in your life you know I told them why is it that we can come to church and we can rejoice when we hear people say God save me and God fill me with the Holy Ghost I know that's the greatest thing that could ever happen to anybody but why is it that we doubt some of the miracles that we know God is able to do you know my father had a friend and I shared this with him in class he told us uh, when he was younger that his mother sent him to the grocery store a man to buy some groceries a few items he went there and when he got to the store he bought the items and he put them in a little paper bag and he was on his way home well on his way home he said the dog chased him and he had a glass jar in the paper sack he said and while he was running from the dog he tripped and dropped the paper sack and broke that glass jar and he was so worried that his mother was going to get him when he got back he prayed Lord don't let her get me Lord please don't let her get me and he says y'all don't have to believe it but when I got back home God had put the jar back together and you know we used to laugh about that oh, he just he just spilled some juice didn't know no nah, that jar didn't break but why couldn't God have put that jar back together I told him the other night in the service like we have been having here anything is possible look at that person next to you and tell them neighbor I don't doubt nothing anymore hey man I don't doubt nothing I told him if while we are in service somebody jump up and start screaming and say you know brother Herman I had diabetes and they cut three of my toes off but while I was in the service praising God I felt three of my toes back in my shoe God grew my toes back I would doubt it because God can do anything y'all don't believe him like that I believe God can stimulate your scalp and regrow your hair some of y'all should have really been praising him right there I mean you should have you should have praised him I don't doubt nothing no more you know what I believe I believe God is the greatest surgeon oh God that there ever was you know what I believe I believe God can operate on you while you're sitting on your seat I believe God can clear your arteries up while you're in the service of the Lord look at y'all ain't saying nothing here that little weak part of your heart do you not know God can give you a transplant while you're under the anointing of the Holy Ghost if he made the first one then God know how to give you a new one touch that person next to you and tell a neighbor God can do anything now look at somebody and tell them neighbor there's a word from the Lord there is a word from the Lord those of you that have your Bibles trust every soldier has a sword come on hold that power up in the air 
thank God because everything else is going down but the word of our God and I believe that while this word is going forth today God's gonna soften the ears of the hearer I'm praying today y'all ain't saying nothing here I'm praying that deliverance flows even before I get through preaching I'm praying that the Holy Ghost will come to your seat those of you that in here that need to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost I'm praying that some start moving all over you y'all ain't saying nothing here I'm praying that somebody that came seeking the Holy Ghost by the time you hit the altar you'll be speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give the utterance I'm praying for a supernatural moving of the Spirit of God. The book of Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 1. Acts chapter number 2 verse number 1. Hey, glory. Acts chapter number 2 verse number 1 and when you have it say amen. amen the Bible gives us this intelligence and when the day of Pentecost was fully come touch somebody and tell them it's here it's here amen it's here they were all with one accord in one place now I told you last year they were not on the cord they were with one accord the problem with so many of us is that we own the cord and the flow ain't, uh, y'all ain't sending here. We stopping the flow because we own the cord. Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, get off the cord. Get off the cord. Amen. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house well they were sitting touch somebody and tell them neighbor the holy ghost is filling the whole house he's gonna fill the whole house where well, you're sitting right out there i might not can reach you but the holy ghost can fill the whole house and i want you to understand the bible said there came a sound there was a sound there was a sound when the holy ghost come he makes a sound there was a sound reminds me of the 20th chapter of the book of saint john's gospel when jesus tells the disciples he blows on them and he says receive ye the Holy Ghost now why would Jesus blow on them and tell them to receive the Holy Ghost it's because he wanted to give them an indication of how to recognize the Holy Ghost so he blew a wind on them because he knew on the day of Pentecost there was going to be a sound as of a rushing mighty wind touch somebody and tell them neighbor there's a sound there's a sound there's a sound when the Holy Ghost come the Holy Ghost makes his own noise look at y'all ain't saying nothing here how do you know you got filled with the holy ghost brother herman because i heard myself make that holy ghost sound Uh, don't you remember when you came through to the holy ghost how did you know you had been filled with the holy ghost it's because you heard yourself mm, making some holy ghost sounds and listen to what the bible declares Mm, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled somebody say all filled so if you are a seeker here today I don't care if you came from anywhere else that told you that the Holy Ghost was not for you according to the scripture everybody that was there that was waiting on the infilling on the baptism of the Holy Ghost they got what they were looking for I remember doing the first Pentecost revival a friend that worked with my sister she came to the revival service and she said listen I've been seeking the Holy Ghost every Sunday we go down front and pray at the altar and she said I've been down there all this time for years and I've been on the altar and it's getting embarrassing now because everybody else getting the Holy Ghost but I haven't got it yet and they just keep telling me oh it's gonna happen it's gonna happen she said but I got to have the Holy Ghost see some people get fed up to the point to where 
it's not that they want it some people feel like they got to have it and when you start getting hungry like that that God if I don't get it I'll die if I don't get it ain't nothing gonna go right in my life the Bible said he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled and when she came to that altar at the first Pentecost revival but she couldn't get nowhere else look at y'all ain't saying nothing what she'd been trying for years to get all she had to do was turn herself over to God and God began to baptize her right there and she left here full of the Holy Ghost the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance listen and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven they were they were there in the community around the upper room now when this noise was noised abroad the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language oh god uh, understand what's going on here hear what's going on now the holy ghost has come into that upper room the bible said they were sent there to wait on the promise of the father because jesus says i'm going to send back another comforter a comforter that would not just be with you but a comforter that would dwell on the inside of you he says while i was with you i kept you oh you didn't need the holy ghost while i was there with you physically because the enemy could not overcome you because you had very god a very god walking in the midst of you but jesus said i am about to go back to my father he says i'm going to your god and to my god he said but what i'm not going to do i'm not going to leave you all by yourself because he knew after three and a half years of walking with the disciples after 33 and a half years of drawing closer to his mother and family that his leaving them was going to leave a void in their life oh, what are we going to do Jesus when you are gone and we can't see you and we can't touch you and we can't feel you and when, when we can't behold you with our natural eyes how are we going to make it the next time the sea begins to get boisterous what are we going to do Jesus the next time demoniacs start crying out oh what are we going to do Jesus you can't leave us like this oh no Jesus you can't leave us like this oh we done got used to power we've gotten used to seeing somebody in the need come and when they leave the need has been supplied you can't and get us used to this type of power and then just walk away from us but Jesus said don't worry don't worry don't worry cuz I got a gift that I want to give you mm. look at y'all saying nothing here he said I got to go now but I got something I want to leave with you for you to remember me by you know sometimes when you've gone somewhere and you've gotten so close to people when you get ready to leave mm, you got to leave them with a little token and say this is what I want you to keep by your side and whenever you see this I want you to remember that you had a friend that spent time with you I want you to remember that you had somebody that loved you and cared about you and Jesus said this is what I'm going to do he said I'm going to leave you a little gift and this gift is going to come in the form of the Holy Ghost and on the day of Pentecost he made good on his promise touch somebody and look at him and tell a neighbor he made good on his promise 
Now, look at somebody else and tell him he made good on his promise. Oh, but it didn't just stay there. Because the Bible said on the day of Pentecost, something happened to those disciples. There was a supernatural transformation that went on in the upper room. Yeah, but look at what the Bible says happened. Men from everywhere were there in Jerusalem. And Peter came out of the upper room. And he began to preach this message of the infilling of the Holy Ghost and power to those that were all in that neighborhood. I want you to look at that neighbor and help me announce my text. Look at him and tell him, neighbor, revival is flowing into the streets. Look at somebody else and tell him, neighbor, revival is flowing into the streets. That's what I want to preach about this morning. I want to preach and I want to tell you that what we have been experiencing in this house, God said it's flowing out into the streets. Clap your hands and give God some praise and glory in the house today. Ah, and let me start by telling you this, that the Holy Ghost is alive and well. Look at the church getting quiet now. I said the Holy Ghost is alive and well. Anybody in here got the Holy Ghost? Listen, don't try to fool me. Do you really have the Holy Ghost? Well, you can testify and be a witness that the Holy Ghost is alive and well. Now, Brother Herman, I don't go to the type of church that talks to me about the Holy Ghost. You know, it's a shame you still got some of them around. Hey, man, I don't go to that type of church. They don't preach to me about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So you got to break this thing on down and tell me what the Holy Ghost really is. Because now at my church, when you go to shouting and hollering out loud, Oh, they start fanning you. Look at y'all ain't standing here. They start fanning him. Oh, he done caught the Holy Ghost. How you catch the Holy Ghost? I ain't figured that out yet. I done had chicken pox. Oh, look at y'all ain't standing here. I done had colds. I done had the flu. But I didn't just catch the Holy Ghost. Oh, look at the church getting quiet here. I had to ask him for it. God, I feel like preaching here today. They fan you now. Oh, take him out, take him out. Take him out, he done caught the Holy Ghost. That's what they tell me the Holy Ghost is. And when he lays out in the floor, and when his feet get straight, because you know that's how you know when you're out under the power in some churches. When you hit the ground, your feet go straight. Oh, God, his feet straight. That means the Holy Ghost on him. Take his shoe off and put it up to his nose. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. That's what they tell you the Holy Ghost is. When you go out under the power, look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. Sometimes they go out and get the smelling sauce. Oh, oh, listen, I don't need no smelling sauce. Look at the church getting quiet here. I don't need no smelling sauce. I need the Holy Ghost to finish doing what he's doing in my life. Oh, God, could I preach up in here? So what is the Holy Ghost, Brother Herman? The Holy Ghost is the power of God in your life. Don't you understand that God wants you to have more power than just the power to shout and the power to speak in tongues? Look at y'all getting quiet here. He said, I want you to have more power than just the power. Y'all ain't talking now to get more money. But don't you know the Holy Ghost is the power to live? Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, God wants to empower you to live. Oh, that's what God wants to do. God wants to empower you in every area of your life. God wants to send a real anointing so that while you're on your job, look at y'all getting quiet now. The Holy Ghost can still move on you. Even though God in the midst of a terrible situation, God said, I want to give you the power. I want to give you the power to drive with the victory. Because you know you got some folk now. They say right up until somebody cut them off on the freeway. Oh, look at the church folk getting quiet now. Church folk with anger issues. You done missed your exit. Because you want to follow this person that done cut you off. Driving close behind him. Trying to intimidate him. Look at y'all ain't saying nothing here. Some of y'all done drove three exits out the way. Just to let the person in front of you know they didn't get the best out of you. Oh God, I wish I could preach up in here. He said, I want to give you a real power. Oh, church, could I preach a minute here? 
Do y'all mind if I preach a minute? Because I'm telling you now, I got a word in me. And I'm going to preach whether you're saying man or not. Amen. God said it. I want to give you the power to live. And so now he says, what I'm looking for in this hour, I'm looking for those that are seeking the Holy Ghost. Just like they sought for it in the Bible days. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, that's what I want to do for you. I want you to go somewhere where you know you can get the Holy Ghost. Now, Brother Herman, the Bible says tarry. You know what the word tarry means? The word tarry means wait until you be endued with power. And he didn't just say tarry. He said tarry at Jerusalem. So if you got to get out on your knees and say, feel me, Lord, feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord, for three months before you really get the Holy Ghost. You still ain't doing it right. Because he said tarry at Jerusalem. But he said, what I'm telling you now is that this is the time that you read about in the book of Acts. And that while they yet speak the word, the Holy Ghost began to fall. He said, you ain't got to wait. I've got another three months. But you can have the Holy Ghost. And you can have it right now. Look at that person next to you and ask your neighbor, do you have it? Uh, God forced him to come to terms with it. Uh, ask him, do you have it? Uh, tell him you can have it right now. Uh, you can have it right now. And so what we see in the book of Acts, we see the disciples going there. And they went there because they knew that it was coming to Jerusalem. But after the Holy Ghost fell in Jerusalem, he's been falling in every city and every nation ever since. Aren't you glad that the Holy Ghost is not confined to a geographical location? Oh, look at y'all ain't talking now. I said, aren't you glad now that you can get the Holy Ghost? Sister Johnson on your coffee break. Look at the church getting quiet here. We got some folks sitting right up in here today. Sister Baker, they came to the street service at the apartment complex and God saved you. And look at us sitting up in the house of God today full of the Holy Ghost power. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Listen, do you not know that God can fill you with the Holy Ghost while you're riding the subway, while you're riding the dart rail, while you're riding the dart bus, while you're in the back seat of a cab? The Holy Ghost can come where you are. He said, all I want to know is, is there a heart that's looking for the Holy Ghost? Is there somebody's heart that's looking for the Holy Ghost? And let me say this, because we're getting so many letters now from the jailhouse. Those of you that are behind bars today, you may be locked up and confined, but I got to tell you that the Holy Ghost that I know, he ain't got to have a key. He ain't got to have the combination. He can squeeze through the bars. Oh God, y'all ain't saying them here. Sit down next to your bed. And if you'll lift your hands up, he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Those of you that are in the hospital, sick and the doctor say you're going to die. Let me tell you this. If you're not going to get better, and even if you're going to die, don't you die until you lift your hands and say, Lord, give me the Holy Ghost. Those of you that have been seeking the Holy Ghost. But Brother Herman, my pastor, don't preach that Holy Ghost. Well, it's in the Bible. Can't figure out why he wouldn't. It's in the Word of God. And listen, Jesus said, receive ye. Didn't he say receive? The Holy Ghost. So why is the Holy Ghost not allowed in some churches? Won't you come in here with that speaking in tongues stuff? 
Don't you come in here with all that shouting stuff. Don't you come in here with all that running and all of that hollering and clapping your hands and saying thank you Jesus out loud because it don't take all of that. You know what that tells me? It tells me you ain't never had the Holy Ghost because if you got it like I got it, sometime when you sit down, your hand go up. Look at y'all ain't talking here. Sometime when you ain't thinking about it, something in you just start bubbling up. Have you, oh God, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Have you ever had the Holy Ghost to start bubbling on the inside? And while you're sitting at your desk or driving down the street, your hand go up and folk looking at you waving back and you gotta tell them that ain't for you. I just thought about the day he filled me. I just thought about the things that I used to do that I got the power. Hey, touch somebody and ask your neighbor, do you have it like the Bible say? So why is there no preaching of the Holy Ghost? How has the Holy Ghost become an offense to some churches? So why don't mind you coming in here and sitting down and giving your tithe? You know, it's amazing we can preach time. We can preach offering. And we're so perfected at it until we done wrote three books that'll teach you how to be a millionaire in 24 weeks. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. We got books and journals now. Seven ways to another blessing. Seven ways to come out of debt. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. We can preach about money all day long, every day of the week, and twice on Sunday. But we don't even understand what the Bible says about the Holy Ghost. And listen here, I can go to college and take a finance class on how to be a millionaire. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I can go to the university and find out how to start my business when I come to church. I didn't come to church to learn how to be a business owner. I didn't come to church just to learn how to become a millionaire. But I thank God for a real place of deliverance that says if you never get no money, if you never get your own business, if you never own your own house, if you never get another car, before you leave here, make sure you got the Holy Ghost. I wish I could preach to you. They tell us here, if I lay hands on you and God never give you another husband, if you gotta go home and hug your pillow all night long, tell God thank you, cause I may not have a husband in my bed, but I got the Holy Ghost in my heart. And he said, I'll be with you to the ends of the world. Could I preach a message here? Shall I quit? Should I quit? Should I quit? Or should I go on? Feel like preaching here. Shake somebody's hand and tell them, neighbor, you don't know what you're missing. If you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost, you're robbing yourself. Why you been coming to church? If you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost, clap your hands and give God a praise in the house today. So say I, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Brother Herman, they told me when I got saved, that's all I needed. Hey, glory. They told me when I got saved. That's all I need. Ay, ay, ay. I can feel it moving now. They told me when I came down and I shook the preacher's hand and he said, thank you for coming. Are you coming by conversion? Or a letter recommendation. The doors of the church are open. Listen, ain't no need in the doors of the church to be open. 
if the doors of your heart are still closed I'm so glad that I got more than a handshake from the preacher they told me when they came down that's all I needed was to say I'm sorry and God forgave me listen just because you're forgiven don't mean you're not going to do it again look at y'all ain't saying nothing here you got some people in your life that's been getting on your nerves ever since you knew them and they keep saying I'm sorry and keep doing it all over again so forgiveness wipes the slate clean but it's not a guarantee that you're not going back to that old way of living oh but when you get the Holy Ghost touch somebody and tell them neighbor the reason why I got delivered from drugs and I haven't gone back is because I got the Holy Ghost the reason why I put the cigarettes down and I haven't gone back was because I got the Holy Ghost the reason why I stopped lying and I'm a truth teller it's because I got the Holy Ghost the reason why now I stopped drinking liquor and haven't had a taste was because I had the Holy Ghost and when you get the Holy Ghost you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you look at that neighbor and ask a neighbor do you have it like the Bible says look at y'all ain't saying nothing here look at somebody else and tell them you can have it today just like the Bible the Bible says well brother Herman what are you really telling me I'm telling you that if you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost you got to let God clean you up first look at the church getting quiet now you got to let him clean you up first you know we trying to speak in tongues before we really get delivered now they got places that a teacher say ta 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 and to 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 look at y'all ain't standing here vote for Obama vote for Obama vote for Obama that ain't the Holy Ghost look at y'all ain't standing here when you get the Holy Ghost the only reason you get it is because you cleaned your life up you walked away from sin you walked away from the world you told God oh God I'll never go back and God said when you get clean inside then you qualify for the Holy Ghost he's not gonna fill you and share you with liquor he's not gonna fill you and three to a bed and you know you ain't married he's not gonna fill you and you're still hoeing around he's not gonna fill you and you're still lying he's not gonna fill you and you're still gossiping touch your neighbor and tell them neighbor you got to be clean I wish I could preach here brown you got to be clean on the inside have you ever had God to clean you up on the inside you got a bunch of folk got these white suits on don't even have ring around your collar but your insides are still dirty your insides are still nasty God said let me clean you let me clean you up and when you get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost slap somebody a high five and tell them neighbor I qualified for the baptism of the Holy Ghost he's gonna give it to those that are serious about it he's gonna give it and pour it out on the all flesh I got to get out of here good evening family I got to get out of here but he's gonna give it to everybody 
that's been seeking it, shake three hands and tell them, neighbor, tell them the Holy Ghost is for you. The Holy Ghost is for you. To the Baptist, it's for you. To the Methodist, it's for you. To the Episcopal, it's for you. To the Pentecostal, it's for you. To those holiness folk, those sanctified folk, those blood washed folk, those blood bought folk, it's for you. To every liar that want to stop lying, the Holy Ghost is for you. To your children that smoking dope, the Holy Ghost is for you. To your husband that's cheating on you now, when you're sitting up in church, lifting your hands, it's for him. Shake three hands and tell him, neighbor, the Holy Ghost is for everybody. Well, Brother Herman, I feel good about this revival, but tell me what you came to tell me. I came to tell you that the reason why we've been in here praying and talking to God, the reason why we got up at 530 in the morning, the reason why we've been fasting and laying out before God is because we wanted God to save and fill with the Holy Ghost. But we wanted something for us. Tap somebody and tell a neighbor, God sent you a gift today. God got a little something, something. He want to lay on you. We came in here for another touch of his Holy Ghost. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that need another touch? Touch your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, that's why I've been here doing this revival. That's why I came out to every service because I was looking for another touch. It's good to shout while I'm in the sanctuary. But God sent me with a word for you. He said, revival is flowing into the streets. Slap somebody a high five and tell them, neighbor, we're launching a Holy Ghost. Take over. We're taking over. We're taking over. Before I take my seat, I got one more thing to tell you. He endowed you because this anointing is going to the streets with you. You gonna carry it to your houses. Touch somebody and tell a neighbor, my house will never be the same. It's gonna blow on your job. Touch somebody else and tell them my job will never be the same. It's gonna blow in your family. Our children will never be the same. It's gonna flow to your co-workers. Tell somebody, my co-workers will never be the same. I come to tell you, we're taking over. Shake five hands and tell them, neighbor, we're taking over. It's a hostile takeover. Go back to Miami and take the spirit of revival. Go back to Louisiana and take the spirit of revival. Go to your houses and take the spirit of revival. Slap somebody a high five and tell them neighbor, it's a takeover. When you go back to your neighborhood, tell the crack house we on our way. When you go back to your neighborhood, tell the liquor stores that days are numbered. When you go back 
to your neighborhood. Now the strip club, they're losing the best customer. When you go back to your neighborhood, tell the dealers there's about to be a shortage of addicts to sell to. Cause the weeds are taking over. I come to tell you, the Holy Ghost is moving through the land of day. I wish I could get somebody to get glad about the Holy Ghost. Because God said he's taking over. He's got an arrest warrant for your wayward son. He's got an arrest warrant for your wayward daughter. He's going where they are. And he's telling them, you got the right to be saved. You got the right to be changed. You got the right to be delivered. You got the right to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I got to leave you. Good day, Pentecost. But I'll stop by to tell you that the road get rough and the going get tough and the hills are hard to climb. But I started out a long time ago and there is no doubt in my mind that I decided to make Jesus my choice. Good evening, family. I got to get out of here. But I stop by to tell you, he gave me power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But the day that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run, not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. If you need it, get down here now. If you need the Holy Ghost, get down here. If you need to be saved, if you need if you need to be saved, it's your time. I got somebody to shake three hands and tell a neighbor, it's your time, your time, your time, your time, your time, your time to be baptized, your time of a Sunday. It's your time for the infill of the Holy Ghost. He's walking up and down the house. He's moving right on your road from the pulpit to the rises. The Holy Ghost is in the house and God said, even if you got it, but you want another touch, run out of your seat and get down here. I got it, but I'm ready for another touch. Get down here. I got it, but I need God to touch me all over. I'm about night. Hey, go I got it. But I need another touch. Come on down. The Holy Ghost is filling with the Holy Ghost. He's touching you now. What you feel on you is the power of God. Why? I wish you lift your hand. Because he's touching you right where you are. Church. I wish you'd praise him, because he's touching you right where you are, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, glory. Come on, those of you that need to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands up now. Lift them up, Jesus. Baptize them, God, with your Holy Ghost. Do it. Do it, Jesus. Do it. 